Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to SGN Tech Forum. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a live demo on how to work with Cisco IOS XE containers or app hosting feature. Uh, on my screen, as you can see, uh, this is a quick recap of my previous video. So th this is the application hosting spectrum available today on iOS XE. You have native Python support. You can uh, install Linux based utilities. You can also host your containers uh, and install any third party services. And uh, you can also have small KVM machines installed running on iOS, uh, Cisco iOS. So how this uh, work, it is packaged as Cisco IO X and that is host application and services at network edge across different hardware platform and anything which is running iOS XC. So you can see that the base is Cisco iOS on top of that you are running Linux uh, mm, uh, operating system and then you can host your application. Uh, core of it is guest shell. What is a guest shell? Uh, quick recap. 64-bit application environment running iOS XE, also available on NXOS platform. Administrator can install, update, operate any third-party Linux uh, apps like Splunk, Puppet, Chef, iPerf, anything. And uh, Python is already bundled. Some modules are already imported, so I'll uh, show you what are those in future. <coughs> All right. So. Uh, by default, access only permitted through management VRF. So your gateway should be your management VRF, but this limitation is going away in future. Uh, what we are going to do in this uh, uh, demo, we are going to see uh, how to enable guest shell, how to use guest shell, how to work within guest shell and run Python script. And finally, I'll show you how to integrate the guest shell uh, with uh, EM script. So let's go ahead and enable guest shell. Uh, enabling guest shell on switches uh, and router config wise may be uh, slightly different because um, uh, cat 9k your uh, guest shell is done by bridging management port but on router you may see that you need a virtual port group and a NAT configuration uh, so in this video we are going to uh, run it on cat 9k especially cat 9500 switch so on my right side I have my lab switch which is a at least 9500 16.93 uh, probably I should have upgraded it to 16.11 or something but this version is also support supported and let me just increase the down width to 5.12 so what we are going to do we are going to see if my iOS X services is running or no so you can check this uh, you can see it's not running. So the first thing what we are going to do is enable iOS X services. All you have to do is go to config and say iOS X. Notify to start. Give it a little bit of time um, so that services uh, go into running state. Um, all services, four services should start. Sometime the HA may not start if that happened, don't uh, worry, worry about that. It's okay. So now let's verify again. Yes, all my services are running. What else you can see here is detail. All right. So iOS IOX is a prerequisite. And now let's go ahead and um, configure our guest shell interface. Uh, which is under app hosting. So let me configure this because uh, Interface must be defined before you can enable guest shell So I'm saying app hosting app ID and my app ID name is guest shell So it's a variable you can use any number or any any other name. It doesn't have to be a guest shell Then I'm going to configure it the vnic to use you can see the vnic management guest interface is zero but you can choose between zero to three guest ip address so ip address for this guest interface um, uh, i'm using 1022 35.2 
NetMask and the get gateway. Gateway is going to be your interface where uh, this uh, guest interface is binded. So that is 21. I'll show you where to where is 21 configured. It is on my management interface. It's not the gateway for the switch. It is a gateway for guest shell. Okay. And then <clears throat> probably you will get this warning because uh, app configuration is changing in future, but uh, don't worry right now. So now how you can verify if your app uh, is running, app hosting is working. You can say app hosting and then question mark. I am first interested in list. No, I found. Give it a few minutes. Uh, okay. Uh, before you can start, you have to say enable guest shell. Okay. So we have defined our interface. Now we are good to uh, enable the guest shell. So you can simply in exec mode only, you can go ahead and say guest shell enable and give it a few minutes. What it is going to do, it is going to start your LXC container, which is your app hosting, just what we defined. So in my case, it is going to start the LXC container name guest shell. So you may see uh, these messages guest shell activated successfully. Uh, or you may not see that, but uh, just wait. And then you can, we are going to check if my guest shell is, uh, should, should go into running state. And you have seen that in my configuration, I have not assigned any resources like a CPU and memory uh, within configuration. Um, I leave it to default. Uh, so I'm going to show you what resources it is using. So very good. Now we see the application uh, guest shell is installed, activated and enabled successfully. So let's check. App hosting list, guest shell running. Very good. This is what we want to see. And then uh, I'm going to show you resources so you can see that these are the memory and CPU and disk, uh, disk space uh, resources been dedicated for this guest shell. So now if you look at your boot flash, probably you will see some less resources because those are dedicated for, for here. And as you destroy your guest shell, these resources get free and go back to the boot flash. Uh, right. So how you can uh, log into the guest shell? You can simply type <coughs> guest shell and it will land you to the shell itself. It's a Linux shell. You can see home guest shell. This is my home directory. And from guest shell only you can actually uh, access the boot flash. That means it is sharing it has the access and you can see that all these files available in boot flash right so we'll see uh, when we run em script we'll see some new files are getting created in boot flash as a result of em script all right now what i want to do is um, show you uh, exit from Okay, and PWD, let's go to the home directory and say what I we have here. So these are the file systems, what I have here. Okay, now let me exit out of the guest shell. And now we'll see how to operate within guest shell, what you can do. So let's connect to the guest uh, shell run bash. I'm going to connect back to the guest shell in bash shell and from here you can say who am i like linux command yeah, i'm guest shell you can say you name hyphen a it is going to give you what kind of like linux um, operating system you're running all those details and one in, in interesting command is do host so you can run any CLI command using do host uh, uh, natively from guest shell. Uh, if I do host, you can see that 
it is printing just like accepting the command just like CLI so pretty cool guest shell uh, uh, now you know how to run CLI based command from uh, guest shell how to enter guest shell uh, next thing what I want to show you is how to work uh, with a native uh, Python within guest shell so let me exit out of here and before we log into the Python shell I want to show you three Python modules are available that are API between guest shell and iOS XE so cli.cli cli.execute cli.configure these modules are already imported and they they help you to run CLI command from Python shell uh, only thing is like they the output differs uh, how, the, how the way they show spit out the output differs from uh, one pattern to another pattern so now let's uh, log into the Python shell I'm going to say get shell run Python and just like any Linux or Mac OS when you type Python it drop you into the Python shell and here you can actually run any of the Python scripts uh, the first command I also show you the Python print hello so it's printing hello then you can import CLIs uh, you can import some modules and run your command so I'm going to import import CLI CLI dot CLI CLI dot version and you're seeing that the import uh, output is shown it's not very pretty printed but yes uh, it give you the cap capability to run your Python mm, uh, run your CLI command directly from the Python uh, shell all right uh, okay now let's me do a clip and hopefully when you import clip it is going to print it nicely so let's see what clip does and you can see that this is printing just like the way uh, if you are in router or switch itself then we have cli.configure uh, that means you can run go to the config shell uh, and then run commands so configure cli.cli I'm not sure if we have to import any module for this but yep look back and, and it's not uh, probably configured right but anyways uh, let's try to do some show command all right yep you can see so you can run all this natively good this is all I want to show you from in terms of Python shell uh, the final thing what we are going to do is uh, see how we can create a Python uh, program within guest shell save it and then tie it up with a EEM script so let me go to guest shell again and create a Python script over there so it's a Python script which is basically very simple it says that every time you say change configuration it should save that in directory and then when you want to do a diff it should present the diff so I'm going to just paste it here and you can as you can see you can scroll up and see what is what goes there but uh, let me just hit escape escape wq and we can do ls hyphen l bash oh my bad ls hyphen l and you can see cfg is there if i want to see the file just to make sure that we don't have any um, syntax error i'm going to just uh, 
uh, why I was worried I'll tell you uh, even if I copy and paste it always misses the I here so I'm going to say insert make it right and then go back and save the program again so WQ yeah, okay. so now you can see my program is saved and uh, we are going to exit from the container go back to the CLI and I'm going to put a EM script which says that if the pattern is sys5 config pattern uh, seen then just go to enable and run this Python script so I'm going to configure the EM script here write config and why not let me just create look back 199 I'm not going to create any IP address so in the background the Python script should have kick, kicked in and let me see what we see in flash okay so you can see that I have two files 29 11 so today is 20, 21st of October 38 and 49 let's see the diff between them so what you can do show archive uh, show archive config and you say flash difference put the file name okay let me do this locally in my machine so terminal length 0 show dir flash and copy both the files okay and my second file which I want to do a diff now it should be fine let me just copy and paste it here okay pardon me for the copy paste error Yep, you can see look back 199 that is the diff so my EM script has uh, worked on Python uh, link to Python script and we are seeing that the, it is capturing the difference so this is for now and I hope you like the video thank you very much